two, one. All right, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy White Album here. Welcome back to some more Suki Hime, a piece of blue glass moon. Let's get right into it, shall we? Let's see, anything particular happened last time? Ah, yes, uh, the strange dream hallucination that Shiki had that turns out could have been real. Who knows? And then we had a CL show up in the classroom. You know, freeloading. <laughs> and there we go. We start off where fifth period begins. So here we go. Sorry, I gotta adjust the mustache real quick. All right. Fifth period begins. I fought off the temptation of sleep as I scribbled down notes during our class, like uh, literature, cl uh, our classic literature class. What the hell. Our school doesn't allow, or still doesn't allow note taking on devices. They said they'll switch to using tablets eventually, but it seems like it's going to take another couple of years. Or it's that thing where, like, I don't know if it's happening to you guys who have graduated high school or like that, but like, I remember when I graduated high school, they just started, com they just started building a completely new building. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> they just started, they just like built a whole new building after I was gone. It's like, okay. It's like, where, where was this when I was here still, you know? Or like, they'll, they'll like fix something that, that, that was like been broken for like your entire time there. And then like, after you graduate, it's like, oh, guess what? They fixed that. You're like, what? Why? Now? <laughs> uh, but, it, 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 you know, you know, just, uh, just things in life like that. It's just funny like that. Um, either way, people really get into trouble for using their phones in classes or in class. It's one of those unspoken agreements. There are plenty of students who use their phones to check their texts, look up information, or just browse the internet. I always prefer doing things the old-fashioned way, so I write everything by hand. It comes on without warning. A high-end, accelerated sense of awareness. My vision begins to bend folding and twisting around a single point. My sense of equilibrium shifts, as if my brain were spinning on its axis. Everything morphs into a blurred mess. It feels like something is lurking at the back of my head, trying to drive me out of my own skull. Crap. I know this feeling. This is the dizzy spell right before my anemia hits. I should have seen this coming. I always knew uh, this was a possibility. Damn it. This hardly ever happens, but I'm going to pass out in class. Darkness shrouds my vision. I fumble for my desk, grabbing the side of it uh, to steady myself. But it doesn't help. I can't put any strength into my fingers. All I can do is brace for the fall. Hey, teach. Just when I was expected to lose control. I feel a hearty slap on my back. Tono looks like he's not feeling so hot. Can I take him to the nurse's office? Before I know it... No, I, I, I said that word. Before I know it, Arihiko is standing at my side. Are you feeling alright, Tono? I hear the teacher speaking to me from the front of the room. I'm fine, I... I just need to... Eh, he says no. I think he should probably go home. Arihiko's booming voice overshadows my attempt at a reply. Where's Noel? She just up and leave? <laughs> I think she got reported to the principal's office after her little stint there with Shiki. <laughs> One teacher saw that was like, mm, we're not going to have that. I see. I've heard from the other faculty about your condition. If you're not feeling well, you're welcome to rest in the nurse's office or head home. I can't tell if he's just being nice to a fault. I can't, wait, I can't tell if he's just being nice to a fault. He just seems to have believed Arihiko wholeheartedly. Oh, damn. Can I speak? Wholeheartedly. Hola. Come on. He said you can go home. You gotta say something when you're not feeling good. 
You're as pale as a sheet, man. Arhiko scolds and slaps me across the back. I think I think I'll go home then. The teacher nods approvingly. Sorry, Arhiko. Uh, I didn't mean to put that on you. Nah, don't sweat it. I've had your back since middle school, remember? So I can tell when you're about to pass out. Our hero returns to his seat. Somehow, I get up from my seat and carry myself out the room. I exit the school. I decided to pass on arresting, uh, on resting the nurse's office. At this time of day, there's a good chance I just end up sleeping until dark. Instead, I decided it'd be better to take a to make the trip back to the mansion. <sighs> <sighs> I think I feel a little better. It must be thanks to the fresh air. Seven years ago, I survived a life-threatening injury. And the price I paid is my chronic anemia. When I first left the hospital, I used to collapse just about every day. And while I lost a lot of opportunities from this, I've never felt like I've missed out on anything important. Thanks to the support of the people around me. After reaching adolescence, most of my symptoms stopped surfacing, at least, as long as I didn't move around too much. Though, every now and again, I still get dizzy and lose consciousness for no reason. I'm lucky Arahiko is around today. I probably would have fallen on my face if you weren't. If you weren't. I breathe deeply, sending a volley of fresh air into my lungs. Struggling against the dull water swirling in my head, I make my way from school. Are you are you sure you're heading straight home? I turn onto the street leading to the station. I don't believe it. Part of my brain must still be spacing out. By force of habit, habit, almost went through the ticket gate. I don't live with the Arimas anymore. I live in the Tono Mansion now. There's no need for me to catch a train. I still don't feel well. I put a hand on my forehead and realize I have a slight fever. No point in heading home if I'm going to pass out on the street before I get there. <laughs> Man, this sucks. Disappointed by my own fertility. Uh, frailty. There you go. I said fertility. <laughs> I think that's something different. <laughs> Disappointed by my own frailty, I carefully prop myself down on a bench. Maybe I'll just rest here until I feel better. Absent mindedly, I watch the crowds in the front of the station. It's just past two in the afternoon. The city is busy as ever. People stream past in waves. Each and every one of them is far too absorbed in reaching their destination to bother knowing who's looking around them. This place is swarming with people, yet everyone's too immersed in their own little world to notice. They're each the main character in their own story. Today is just another day in the story of their lives. Despite seeing perfectly well, they spend every waking moment in willful ignorance. Their days never intersect, nor do they, uh, nor do their respective paths deviate. Preferring to expand as little effort as possible to reap the most basic level of comfort, them. It seems people have chosen a life of individualism, to only interact when absolutely necessary. I mean, to be fair, in this modern world, until you end up dead in like some ditch or on a forest, you know. That's, that sounds a little fucked up, but it's kind of true, right? Like, some of the stories I'd be, like, reading on, like, TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, it's just like, oof. Like, some of that shit's rough. <laughs> it's all because some person met up with some other person that had some malicious intent or, you know, uh, ideas on them. And, you know, that's the unfortunate, unfortunate uh, uh, world we live in, you know? I don't know if it's my fever, but something has me feeling sentimental. Alright. I should head home. I'm feeling better anyway, 
And I know, and the longer I sit here, the longer I dwell on this stuff. Lifting myself from the bench, I join the masses. I start for the mansion. My head's still heavy from the anemia. Right now, all I want to do is lock myself in my room, close my eyes, take off my glasses, and just breathe. Ooh. Oh, we're getting to this part? Okay. Until I see her. Fair warning. It's about to get graphic. Okay, fair warning. I'm almost certain time itself has stopped. Every part of me is being drawn in. The moment forever imprinting itself onto my memory. Golden hair, crimson eyes, white clothes against porcelain skin, pure as driven snow. Not a blemish to be found, like a sacred uh, summit yet untainted by man. My pulse skyrockets. Bodily rhythms go haywire. Well, I love the music change. The music change is so good. I'm, I'm glad I kept the music on here. Because, I again, that was such a thing that I hated about not playing um, uh, most of the game, most of uh, Holy Night without music. Basically until the end. My veins and arteries dilate. Every nerve in my body fires. As this phantasm feverishly warm, uh, warms my spinal cord. To say I'm captivated would be an understatement. I stopped walking, what feels like ages ago. As she leaves my peripheral vision, I turn around, not to lose sight of her. I realize I haven't been breathing. I feel nauseous. I can't breathe. The pain is unbearable. I can't remember how to breathe. My throat is on fire. My eyes feel like they're about to burst. My palms are slippery, knees weak, arms are heavy. <laughs> Yet, deprived of blood, my fingertips are so cold they're numb. I'm drenched in sweat. Well, that's what happens when you see a princess, my man. Come on now. I recall that I'm still an animal, still alive. That gets me breathing again, but my will. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't choose anything. All I wanted was to go home. My will. It snaps like a tightrope, and I plunge into the depths below. I have to follow her. I have to follow that woman. I have to follow her. Follow her and speak with her. Dragging my frozen feet. I pant like a... I follow after my fair prey. Oh, here we go. Here's the switch. The woman walks slowly. She has no idea I exist. Questions, one after another, graze the back of my mind. She doesn't know I exist. That's so goddamn stupid. Could she be the one? She hasn't noticed me yet. She must be returning from something. Must be. She's probably exhausted, out of strength, which means this is my chance. My chance to... her. For sure. Okay, hold on. I want to taste this... ripened fruit. Okay. Oh. <laughs> When was I last, uh, satiated? I want to... Oh, fuck. I want to pursue her. To tear her apart. Not for self-gratification or mere sex. Something more primal. I want to savor her. To bring her... Uh, to bring her low. I can't remember. I still... Fuck, stop making me read backwards. 
every fiber of my being wants to plank her. Can't remember the first time. I sigh, but the breath doesn't feel like mine. I claw out my chest to stem my emotions from bursting. The woman weaves through the crowd, looking delectable. My throat is on fire. I haven't been breathing. What about it? Of course I haven't. A... Like that would get more going, or would get anyone going. I take it out of my bag and slide it into my pocket as I walk. My fingers trace along the iron. I can't believe my luck. I even have the necessary tools. Incredible. I'm so close. Our secret rendezvous has me nearly over the edge. I should keep my distance, so she doesn't notice, so no one gets in my way. We're total strangers, so I need to track her scent as naturally as I can. She enters an apartment complex. Automatic glass doors, tight, secur uh, tight security. Non-residents can't even enter the lobby. Or non-residents. Non I wrap around the emergency exit, exit, stash my jacket in the shadows, cut, enter. The lobby is empty. I look at the elevator. The light stops at the, at the top floor. I call the elevator with the button, enter. I shiver as soon as I cross the threshold. Percent remains, causing my lips to curl. This is exciting. Caged in this cramped box, I grip the weapon in my pocket and wait. She's so close. In just a few moments, I can finally... her. Exit the elevator. The hall should be empty. I vacate the box, to the other end of the corridor, still empty. I can't think. Only a single word lingers in my brain. Woman. That woman. I'm going to. I arrive at the third room. This is the one. All the other rooms are empty. Are you sure? I'm sure. All animals have a decent sense of smell, whether we like it or not. Some have simply forgotten how to use it. Pitiful. Unforgivable. Worthless. Civilization's obsession with compassion has instead dealt in us invisible. Uh, dealt us an invisible, fatal blow. I move to ring the bell, but stop myself. My glasses are in the way. I can't do anything unless I take them off. E. You hear me? You shouldn't ever look at things without thinking of it, uh, thinking through it first. Okay, we got we got homegirl Alko speaking. Oh, homegirl, this, this is planned. He knows what he's about to do. A woman said that to me long ago. Right now, I can't remember her name or what she looked like. I slowly remove my glasses. The lines squirm, wrinkling my vision. Even I don't understand. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? What does Shiki Tono want to do with that woman? I don't know. I don't know. So I ring the bell. Hi. Be right there. I hear a voice. The door opens. In that instant, I slide through the gap and into the room. The woman tries to speak, but it's too late. Never will I hear the voice of a woman I so craved. Everything is finished before it can reach me. The sound of metal on metal rings the moment I enter the room. Was it the sound of the door? The grinding of my thoughts. 
a siren signaling the end. All wrong. Then what was it? The answer is obvious. There's only one thing it could be. It's the climaxing sigh of my knife leaving its sheath. I pass through the lines across the woman's body. I stab. I cut. I slice. I carve. Severing piece after piece until nothing is left untouched by death. All in all, 17 lines across her body, throat, back of the head, right eye to the lips, right upper arm, right forearm, right ring finger, left elbow, left thumb, middle finger, left breast, lower ribcage of the heart, two from the stomach to the belly, inner left thigh, outer thigh, left shin, across the toes on the left foot. It takes less than a second no longer than a mere passing glance. In the blink of an eye, it's over. She's dismembered into 17 lumps of flesh. Okay, what, remember what I just said. <laughs> About to get graphic. Damn. Huh? A dumbstruck voice reaches my ears. The reality hasn't set in that the voice belongs to me. I feel another flurry of dizziness take hold. Chunks of something are scattered in front of me. Their marbled floor is covered in an ever-expanding red liquid like someone tipped over a bucket. The smell of blood assaults my nostrils. No entrails have been spilled. The cuts are clean. Well, that's how you meet a woman, right? <laughs> a red mess creeps steadily over the ground. It's strange. There's nothing in the room except for me and the woman's scattered remains. What? What have I... The pool is, vivid, is a vivid crimson. The knife is still in my hand. She did. She's... Dead. Of course she is. No human could ever survive something like this. Mom. Why? Who gives a shit about the why? Just no or just now with his own two hands. Fiki Tono butchered a woman who he's never seen before in his life. I killed her? Must have. Where am I wrong? But I don't have a reason. So this can't be. It can't. I never had a reason to do this. So it can't be. It can't. I'm the only one here. Someone might, uh, someone else might have been here before, but I'm the only one left alive. So this can't be. It can't. No. I had no reason to. I didn't mean to. I wasn't in my right mind. Maybe I never was. So this can't be. It can't. It can't, it can't, it can't. The pool of red continues to swell. A slow, slick wave. It's almost at my feet now. I try to lift my feet, but it's too late. The woman's red blood is viscous like tar. Threads stretch from the floor, clinging to my raised soul. Red blood. It's oozing red because you butchered her. What the, okay, hold on. I just realized. What is the irony that I'm wearing a red shirt today, too? What the fuck? It just clicked with me. that I'm, I just looked at myself in the camera, and I'm just like, I just realized I'm wearing red. What are the odds? All right, here we go. No. It wasn't. That wasn't me. That's right. It wasn't me. It could have been. It wasn't me. This must be... Ooh. Okay, I've heard of this. I can't choose uh what to call. I can't choose um two. I think it's because he hasn't 
it has an obviously, you know, no, this is the rally of creative. So I can't pick this. I'm forced to pick the first one because he's obviously he's like in the mental state of like, I did not just fucking murder this poor woman, right? This must be some kind of bad dream. That's it. This is all just a terrible dream. But for some reason, the smell of blood feels so fresh, so real. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You didn't kill her. Or no. You did kill her. I had, I had no reason to. Of course you had a reason. When you saw her, you only think of one thing. I... First thing he saw was like, not like, damn, she's gorgeous. She's like, I have to murder her. <laughs> That's insane. I... Also, I really like this picture of Arcoid. <laughs> yes, hi. Shiki Tono wanted to kill that woman. In that moment, that was all that mattered. My mind had just melted away, so I couldn't put it into words. No. No! The stench of blood is making me sick to my stomach. The contents of my stomach flow up. Crimson seeps into my eyes. My head spins. I kneel in the sea of blood. Bile rushes up my throat. I empty the contents of my stomach. Sobbing, I throw up every last bit of food, every last drop of fluid in my body. There's nothing left in me. But as if to deny what happened, to undo everything and turn back time, my body forcefully continues to heave. It hurts. My innards feel like they're burning. Tears continue to stream down my face, and I collapse into the ground like garbage. I'm awash in red. Pain seeps through me as I see crimson everywhere. It all feels like a dream. My tears keep spilling. Keep spilling through. I'm miserable because I killed someone. No. That's not right. I mercilessly butchered someone for no reason whatsoever. I turn her body to chunks of flesh in a flash. I don't understand what's happening. Why do I feel like this? Why did I kill her for no reason? There's a reason. I don't understand. No. None of this feels like reality. Yeah. I had one of my usual dizzy spells. And I've been dreaming this this whole time, right? No. How can just one little knife do this to a person? Even with a butcher's saw, I'm pretty sure this should have taken all day. This can't be possible with just a knife. Those lines never existed in the first place. I've been fooling myself into thinking... No. Bile drips from my lips. I'm covered in it from, uh, from my chin down. There's crimson mixed in. My stomach, despite being empty, continues to squirm and contract, causing my esophagus and throat to bleed. It hurts. That's how I know. This isn't a dream. I'm just lying to myself. I was wrong. I knew all along. I craved that woman from the moment I saw her. The same goes for my eyes. I knew the lines meant I could cut anything I see like paper. And I knew deep down, this all applied to humans as well. But I never gave it a second thought. I was intent on living an ordinary life. If I was capable of killing a person like this, I should have gouged my eyes out, or at least shunned, or at least shunned human contact. I'm, I'm sorry, Master. I'm so, so sorry. It was such a simple promise. Yeah, I couldn't keep my world, my world, how's that world? <laughs> my word. 
Am I? Am I myself again? I don't know. The impulse that was so strong just moments ago seems to have faded entirely. But the thought of fighting the urge didn't even cross my mind. Kill this woman. As if it were perfectly natural, I followed through, thinking nothing else. So the answer is simple. I must be insane. I probably began, it probably began seven years ago. Ever since the accident, that should have killed me. Ever since I miraculously returned to the, from the brink of death. Well. That sure took a turn, right? Went from, yeah, I have a, an anemia bout, so I left school early to, I'm going to murder this woman. <laughs> Hear the distant sound of rain. The long and gentle hiss of rainfall touching down. Huh? My head is hazy. My throat aches with every breath. I can't help but wince. Master Shiki? Suddenly, I sense a person, a voice by my side. I'm in my room? I find myself lying in my own bed. I put the glasses on that are placed next to my pillow. Good morning, Master Shiki. Hisui? Yes. How are you feeling? Like utter shit right now. <laughs> What a strange question to ask. How am I feeling? Why would I? Why? That's a good question. Why? Why am I sleeping here? Even though I kid, I stop short of saying it. The reasoning, the reasoning part of me hits the brakes. Impelling me not to utter that word. Isui. Why am I here? Do you not remember, Master Shiki? Isui furrows her brow ever so slightly. We received a call that you left school early. When you failed to arrive before nightfall, Kohaku went to look for you. She found you in the park. The park? You mean the one near here? Yes. Yes. You were asleep on a bench, and once awoken, you managed to walk back to the mansion unassisted. Was he like covered in blood or anything like that? That could be a giveaway of something. I don't I don't know. That could just be me. <laughs> I don't believe it. I can't remember that at all. It is not surprising that you have no memory of it. Your anemia left you, uh, left you rather weak. I imagine your mind was still clouded. I don't remember anything. Still, I can't deny of any of what Hitsui has told me. It's already 9 in the evening? How did that happen? After return, oh. Okay. 
After returning, you quickly retire to your room, saying you wish to rest, or saying you wish to rest. We offered to call a doctor, but you told us this happens often and is nothing to worry about. Huh. Yeah, passing up from anemia isn't exactly uncommon for me. Well, I mean, it's not. Maybe that's not uncommon for you. I think murdering a person is the uh, is the 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 uncommon or is like the uh, the not so common thing. <laughs> but this time was different. I killed someone. Oh wait. Hisui. What did it look like? Huh? Excuse me. Dakara, Fukuso. I mean my clothes, my shirt and shoes. Was there um blood? They should have been soaked in it. Your clothes were dirty, so they were being washed at the moment. You put them in the wash? With all that blood? Though there was a quite a bit of mud, I did not see any blood. Hey, that, that rhymed. Also, your jacket seemed fairly clean. Only your shirt and pants were muddy. Yeah, that's because you took it off before you went and packed and slashed poor Arcoid. <laughs> Before he performed a Mortal Kombat fatality on her. Um. Also, he's is looking at him like, I I think we need to take this man to a mental institute. <laughs> no, that, that can't be right. I was kneeling in a sea of blood. Arms and legs should have been stained red. Did you did you have a bad dream, Master Shiki? You were quite restless while you slept, and you seem pale even now. Hisui looks directly at me. Dream? Could it have been a dream? That sensation. That smell of blood. That woman in white. A miracle given flesh. Well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. It must have been a bad dream. I let out a relieved sigh. That's right. It was nothing more than a horrible dream. I'd never do something that would break my promise with Master, especially without a decent reason. Yeah, because if Aoko found out, she would fuck you up sideways, big dog. Finally woken up. Well, uh, if you're well enough to eat, I can prepare dinner for you. Yeah, you all right, dinner. I know it's only a dream, but I still can't get the color and smell or smell of blood out of my head. Sorry, no thanks. I think I'll just go back to sleep for tonight. Actually, can I ask you something, Hisui? Hi. Shiki-sama. Of course, Master Shiki. So, uh, when I came home tonight, did Akiha say anything? Akiha She was not at home. Uh, she was not home at the time. I informed her of what, ha uh, uh, what had occurred when she returned two hours ago. Hisui gives me an inquisitive look, as if to say, "What about it?" Yeah, uh, 
It's nothing really. I just thought she might be upset with me for causing so much trouble on my third day back. Well, I mean, to be fair, if I, if I heard that my brother had a crazy anemia bout and we found him fucking roughed up, I would be more concerned than angered. Mistress Akia certainly did seem upset, but I do not believe she was angry. Isu takes a step back after she speaks. Excuse me, I must be going. Please call if there's anything you need. Right, thanks. Actually, one more question. Yes, Master Shiki. It's running outside, huh? When did that start? It began some time before you returned. You were already soaked when Kohaku found you. Really? I don't remember that either. I guess my anemia was particularly bad this time. I should have rested at school. Uh, good night. Sorry for everything. Uh, please thank Kohaku for me well, or as for me as well. Of course. Good night, Master Shiki. Sleep well. It was all just a dream. The words feel no, the words feel bleak coming from my lips. Nothing feels real. Not the horrible dream, nor the fact that it was a dream. The rain outside falls hard. My head is still a little heavy. I peer at my chest. My scar from years ago stands out starkly against my skin, like burn marks. The knife my father left me is sitting on the desk in my room. It was a dream. There was no way it was anything else. I repeat those words in my head to convince myself, and I close my eyes. I exhale deeply, like I'm trying to expel some deep-seated odor from my lungs. My consciousness fades, and I'm ushered into a deep, dark slumber. When I was a child... I remember, I remember someone urging me to never tell a lie I didn't believe in, uh, I didn't believe myself. Ooh, Alko's words coming back to bite him. Hey, there we go, chapter three finished. Impulsive, what was I say? Impulsive inversion? I, I just forgot what the hell it was called. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to y'all. But now we should be on day four. Yes, I would like to save my progress. Imp impulse inversion. Well, you call that an impulse, all right? All right. Oh, excuse me. All right, day four. I wonder if I can delete these. Oh, I can. I actually might keep these just in case, uh... Because I want to take some different routes. Day four. Fire and blood. Part one. I don't know about the fire, but there was a lot of blood. <laughs> <clears throat> also, if you didn't notice, I have my light off. Um, I think it sets the mood whenever I play uh, Hime or Witch on the Holy Night. I wait to see a dull gray morning light. It's quiet. Even the pitter-patter of the rain is nowhere to be heard. The sky is still blanketed in clouds, despite the rain having ceased. After taking one last deep breath, I heave myself off the bed. I could barely sleep last night. Whenever I thought I might drift off, the scene I witnessed would play out in the back of my mind. It 
a floor dyed red, covered in scattered pieces of... At times like this, possessing memories or clarity of thought can really be a pain. Just when you've got something you like to forget, your mind drags you back to relive the experience all over again. Oh, this is ridiculous. It's all just a bad dream. I shouldn't be haunted by nightmares when I'm awake. Exactly. It was all just a dream. I like it. I like my brain to hurry and forget about it already. There's a knock at the door. The clock tells me it's just before 6 a.m. Who'd come knocking this early into uh, early in the morning? Probably Hisui, your maid. Yep, there, there we go. Please excuse me, uh, Master Shiki? My apologies, I wasn't aware you had woken up. I just woke up like two seconds ago, but yeah. It's fine, really. Sorry if I startled you. I went to bed early last night, so I woke up a bit earlier than usual. What about you, though? What brings you here so early? Hisui falls silent and gives me a hesitant look. Upon closer inspection, I realize she's cradling my freshly laundered clothing for the day. Did you come to bring me my school uniform? Yes. Indeed. Well, let me to apologize again. I mean, that's her job, though, so I don't know why she would need to apologize. Like, I understand that she is like, you know, I'm st he's, he's still not used to it, but it's like, I mean, you, you yourself said you're going to wash my clothing, even though I know how to do it. I'm assuming he knows how to. I mean, he's loved with a normal family. <laughs> You saw something unbecoming. Unbecoming of what? Yeah, there we go. I ate Hisui quizzically. Hisui stays silent. I don't recall seeing anything I describe as unbecoming, but I decide not to push the matter. You can just put the clothes over there then. I'll head right to the parlor after I change. Yo, can can the weekend just start for this man, bro? He needs it badly. <laughs> Understood. Then please excuse me. He swoops quietly heads for the door, but stops just short of it. She swiftly turns to face me again. Master Shiki, since you're up early, would you like me to draw you a bath? A bath? No, I'm a, a shower, okay? Baths are if you're trying to relax. A shower if you're trying to get all the dirt and grime off you, okay? It's like how they do that in Japan with the onsen. You shower first to clean yourself, and then you lay into the into the hot springs to, to chill out. That's how that works. You don't... You don't... Taking a bath... While you're dirty and shit, so because you're just wallowing your own fucking filth, just filthy soap water when you think about it. Take a shower first, then take a bath. Okay? That's how that works, alright? New York Asakura. This early in the morning. Hi. Yes. You're awfully dirty. Would you not prefer to wash your body before leaving for uh, leaving for school? Well, yeah, take a shower, not a bath. Now that she mentions that, I am a mess, which isn't much of a surprise considering I passed down the middle of a park yesterday. Oh, you're right. Sorry for the inconvenience, but could you prepare the bath for me? If I jump in this early, I should still have plenty of time to get ready for school. Understood. The bath will be ready for you in 20 minutes. 
Isui places the uniform down, then leaves the room. It's still only 6 a.m. With nothing else to do, I spent 20 minutes idly staring at the ceiling. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. The thoughts throbbing at the back of my mind are washed away by the water. Seated beside the bathtub, I open the bucket over my head and take a deep breath as the chilly water soaks my, through my hair. Oof. That was such a horrible dream. Why would I ever dream about murdering some woman I've never seen before? I'm greeted by these sorts of dreams purely because I'm unaccustomed to living in the mansion, then I'm dreading what else is to come. <laughs> I really need to pull myself together. I run the cool water over my head one more time, rubbing and cleaning every part of my body. My towel just barely grazes my throat before a stinging pain hits me. What is this? I look at my neck in the mirror. Gross. My throat looks red and swollen. It's probably because you were vomiting so fucking much, dog. I return to my room and change into my uniform. It's only a little past 7 a.m. Still bewildered at how such a simple bath could make me feel so much better. I grab my bag and leave the room. Knife in hand. Ready to cause trouble to an innocent woman. <laughs> Good morning, Shiki. You're up early today. Kohaku steps out of the parlor just as they come down the stairs. You looked refreshed. Did you just get out of the bath? Yes, I did actually. I'm impressed you could tell. She's like, dude, your hair's wet. <laughs> what, what, what did I just say? <laughs> what did I just say? What did I just say? That wasn't too hard. Your hair's still wet. What did I just say? That's funny. <laughs> wow, you're even more adorable when you're fresh out of the bath. Kind of weird to say, but sure. I had to avert my gaze from her lighthearted smile. As I am now, her pure innocent expression does nothing but make my chest ache. Uh, but just wait a moment. I'll have your breakfast ready soon. Huh? Breakfast? Something edible. Oh. Even that word is enough to make me recall the color of blood. The thought leaves me with even less of an appetite than usual. Hmm. How about I prepare a western style breakfast today? Ooh, eggs and bacon? Hell yeah. Wakey wakey eggs and bakey? Hell yeah. Uh, sure. I'd be happy with whatever you serve me. Right. Breakfast. I guess the bath felt so good I forgot all about it. Well, to be fair, let's see, when was the last time you technically ate? Because like, he did eat breakfast. Previously, he didn't eat lunch, had an anemia about... What's it called? Yeah, so... Pr pr practically almost a whole day without eating. Which is something you shouldn't do. Obviously, with his condition, you can't. Is that a thing, though, with anemia? You can't eat a lot? I'm assuming that's the case, right? But I don't know anybody personally that has anemia. I completely skipped that sentence. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I completely skipped that sentence. Let me go back to that. Mm -hmm. 
Oh shit, a little, little too far. Hold on. A little too far. Mm, 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 mm. I completely skipped that sentence because I was talking about anemia over here. Yep, Morden Kohaku. Mm, look refreshed because your hair's still wet. Yep, yep, that's fine. Yep, yep. Western style breakfast, yep. Preppy, edible. So the word breakfast makes him like, oh, like that's kind of weird. Got some appetite, yep. Yeah. Ah, uh, Already said eggs and bacon. Alright, here we go. <laughs> I completely skipped this one, so. Really? You didn't eat dinner yesterday, so Hisui and I were wondering whether the growling of your stomach had woken you. Nah, I just slept for too long, that's all. But don't worry about me. I've had a small appetite ever since I was a kid. It's not unusual for me to skip a meal or two. Oh, now that you mention it, you look rather trim. Are you actually a vegetarian or something like that? But no, it's because my anemia bouts would legit kill me if I eat too much. <laughs> It's not like I go out of my way to be one, but I guess I did pretty much stick to vegetables when I lived with the Arimas. When I was discharged from the hospital, the doctor told me to avoid anything that would be too hard in the digestive system, but I think I would have avoided meat even if he had told me not to. One way or another, meat reminds me of death. And after what you just did to Arcoid, yeah. <laughs> hmm, hmm. So you really aren't picky about food. That'll make preparing your meals easier. I'll whoop you up something, so please take a seat in the parlor. Kohaku quickly returns to leave, but I stop her, feeling like I won't be able to pass anything through my throat as things are now. Ah, I don't worry about making me anything. I'm going to skip breakfast for today and go straight to school. Tell Akia for me, would you? I turn and head for the front door, but as soon as I do, a firm pair of hands grip my arm. Shiki. I wasn't expecting that. Kohaka looks angrier than I've ever seen her before, or I've ever seen what, than I've ever seen her. What are you saying? Have you seen yourself in the mirror today? You look like shit. What? Dude, that'd be great if she just said that. Uh, I think I had a look when I was taking a bath. No way. If you had even one peek at yourself, you wouldn't be saying such, thi such things. Kohaku was seriously mad. Now that I think about it, when I glanced myself in the mirror earlier, I didn't look a little pale. I was ashen white. Like Kratos. Hey now. You don't have to worry about me too much about- you don't have to worry too much about that. I'm naturally pale, so my complexion just looks a little worse when compared to other people. That's no excuse. You'll never grow big and healthy skipping breakfast, you know. If you don't have an appetite, then I'll make you something that's light on the stomach, so please go into the dining room. Me, I'm a breakfast dude. I love breakfast, bro. Like, hmm. Any form of breakfast, I fucking love. I, I, I'd say I'm a, I'm a more of a breakfast lunch guy than I am a dinner guy. Because, you know, it's like, because the way, like, for me, I like, I, I don't, I don't like to eat after eight. Um, you know, because it's like, depending on what I eat, it's like usually kind of heavy on the stomach. It's just more my fault than anything, but I, I'm definitely a breakfast and lunch type of guy, but I love breakfast, dog. Like, breakfast 
either from like a simple bowl of cereal to like a full like you know eggs bacon hash browns type of thing i will delete off the face of the earth i love breakfast so fucking much <laughs> breakfast is just so good it's just one of those things i love like, i'll eat breakfast for dinner still clenching my arm kohaku drags me into the dining room i guess there's no fighting it I still don't really feel like having breakfast, but if Gohaku is this insistent, then I have no other choice. Oh, look at he's from there. It looks like she's sleeping on the wall, <laughs> but she just has her eyes closed. And she's gone, okay. <laughs> Good morning, Shiki. Are you feeling better today? No, not really, but you know. I can't say for certain. Well, Akia sounded a little reserved just then. I'd wager that her concern for my well-being might be overriding her usual firmness. Yeah, again, I would be I would be I'd be concerned too if it's like, yeah, we found your brother in a park, covered in dirt, passed out, knife in hand, but for some reason his jacket's still nice and clean, and then uh, soaked to the bone from because of the rain. Walked home unassisted and then fell asleep again. I'd be like, uh, wake them up. I want to talk to them real quick. <laughs> you know? So, you know, to be fair to Akia, I would be concerned too. Ah, oh, morning. I guess I'm okay, all things considered. I take my seat at the table. I'll go and prepare a few dishes that are easy to digest. Please wait a moment. Kohaku leaves the room in a flurry. She's probably headed for the kitchen in the mansion's west wing. Which leaves me alone with the two with the two others in the dining room. The usually restrained Akia and Hisui, who has taken a, her spot against the wall. It's incredibly awkward, to say the least. Nisa, Shiki, I'd like, to, I'd like to ask you about yesterday. Is it true that you fainted in the park? Fainted in the park. Yeah, I don't really remember much about it though. But that's what Kohaku and Hisui told me, so I must have, I guess. No, honestly? Don't talk about it like it's someone else's problem. You know full well that you have a weak constitution. If you ever feel ill, you ought to contact the mansion at once. We'll send someone to pick you up from school. He's like, I could do that? <laughs> What am I? In elementary school? I can at least figure out how to get home when I don't feel well, so that won't be necessary. Yet, you didn't make it home on your own. So then, by your own admission, that would make you little more than a child. Look, yesterday was an exception. It rarely ever gets that bad. It's not like my body is actually weak. It's just a chronic anemia. There's no reason for you to be fussing over me. I wasn't expecting to read that, okay. Yesterday was the matter of just dead-ass poor timing. Okay, I was not expecting dead-ass to be in here. <laughs> we had cringe and we had dead-ass. Okay, that's insane. Dead? Do you even listen to yourself when you speak? You forgot the second word of that. We're talking about your body here. What am I to do if my own brother drops dead on his way back home? Akia is seriously mad. Yeah, no shit. 
I'm a little surprised that she cares this deeply. She's your sister. Your behavior is, too, is much too thoughtless. So please, take care of yourself a little better. It's not like I already do. It's like what? It's not like I don't already do that, you know. I don't join in any sports, and I do everything the doctor tells me to do. What more can I do? Or what can? What, what more can I even do to take care of myself short of getting admitted to a full-time care, a full-time care facility? Honestly. I'd be tempted to arrange it if I could. You probably can. I'd have a facility on some isolated island and put you there till you learn to reflect on your behavior. Not what I meant, but sure. Despite her pouty, averted gaze, Akia says something truly frightening in a completely casual tone. <laughs> the scariest part of it all is that for her, what she is talking about isn't out of the question. Yeah, she can. And probably will do that. I'll let us slide this once, since the whole affair resolved itself without any further issues. But I won't look so kindly on to the. Uh, I won't look so kindly on the next time. Do you hear? I, I will put you on an isolated island, my man. <laughs> After giving me a piece of her mind, Akia's temper seems to cool a little. Throughout the entire exchange, Hisui watches us like a statue. Alright, but I think that's where we're going to end it there, ladies and gentlemen. Quick set, quick set, mash that a few times, you know what I mean? But there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for today's episode. Um, I don't know whether or not I want to put that, because I, I do have like a disclaimer notice that i that i was using for my corpse party playthrough i don't know whether or not i should put this on this video i mean th then again you know i'm assuming that you guys who are watching are over the age of i'd say 18 or at least someone who could be like oh damn okay because again that 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 it got graphic very quick i don't want to say very quickly but it took about like seven or six parts to get to to where I actually meet Arcoid, but um, but yeah, we got to see her at least once. Obviously, Shiki doesn't know her name yet, but we know who she is. Um, especially if you played Melty Blood. Uh, but that's gonna be again, that's gonna be it for today's episode. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy. And if you did like, comment, and subscribe, it is your boy White Island. I will see you guys with some more Sukihime. Take care.